Well, this is Mobia. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm -hmm. in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. One man revived the vanishing hope to life. Ah, let the great be a friend of me to fight. And they were singing out. Holy, 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 The great leader has risen up now oh, And he's leading the Biafra to victory mm, In your madika, I pick a cock when I'm low When I sing along
side of running from police and immigration. Jumping condominium, rusting a girl. Ebe ka unusi, Biafra. Ebe ka unusi, Biafra. Gai mara po Biafra. Gawe fo so gabiri. Gai mara po Biafra. Gawe fo so gabiri. Biafra is my home. Enima, enima, enima. Good evening, wonderful people, great be our friends, wherever you are on the face of this planet. And might I add also Nigerian youths as well. Wherever you are listening to us from, wherever you have joined us from this very evening, afternoon or morning, depending on where you're domiciled, we wholeheartedly welcome you to a very special and I believe landmark broadcast on this very day, the 10th day of January in the year of almost high Elohim 2021. The time now is precisely a minute past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and I do believe also by the same number of minutes or should I say minutes past the hour wherever you are residing or listening to us from. I welcome each and every one of you and as I do so I will encourage you to welcome those who are around you as well. As you all know, listening to us these days can be a very tortuous and very difficult affair. I believe that we are transmitting live, clear and direct via IPOB Community Radio, Radio Biafra app and all the other platforms across the entire spectrum of social media. I believe that we are live on those platforms and direct at this very moment. Our satellite is working, I understand. I do not know for our relay stations back in Biafra land because we are doing a major refit of all our systems to make it more robust and resistant to attempts by the enemies to try to cripple what we are doing because if they stop us from disseminating this very wonderful gospel then we are in very serious trouble therefore i welcome each and every one of you i did recommend earlier before coming on air that we should all have downloaded ipob community radio and radio biafra apps because they are low data usage if you download them it's not going to cost you more data than you already expend should you prefer to listen via youtube or facebook therefore my recommendation as always will be please go and download ipob community radio also download radio biafra app via those mediums and platforms you should be able to listen to us not just now but going forward allow me to once again welcome each and every one of you my name is Nande Kano I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra the director of radio Biafra and Biafra television and by the very special grace of the most high a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra and by extension to those ethnic groups within the damnable zoological republic that are yearning for freedom the same way that we are in the east i welcome all of you and that it is customary with us we must hand over our proceedings this very evening, morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are, 
to the most high in heaven chupo kitabia ba promijanina let us pray and i will pray in english today our father who art in heaven Elohim Adonai El Shaddai We come before thee Because your children Your people of this very nation called Biafra And everything in it belongs to you We are not here today by accident you are the one who created us and set us in this very land of the rising sun at this particular time in history for the glory of your name and your name alone and not that of any man. But our Father, people in this very nation, in the land of Biafra, some of them have decided to eat their own flesh. They have decided to turn against your very work, which is the restoration of your kingdom upon the face of this very earth, as was prayed for by Yeshua. Those we consider as brothers and sisters are in bed with our enemies, the Janjaweed Caliphate from the north. They have turned against your work. But your word always said that if we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, you will heal our land. That is why we participate in atonement every blessed year and you have healed our land, you have given us Eastern Security Network, and that irrepressible march to freedom has commenced. May you heal our hearts, heal our land, remove bitterness and resentment from our hearts, and help us once again as our ancestors did to live like your children under your grace, your mercy, and your eternal blessing. All this we ask in the name that is greater than every other name. Elohim, Amen. Now and forevermore we pray. He say, He say, He say, as it is also usual with us here, we encourage you to have your pen and paper ready this very evening. Because at the end of this very divine process that we have embarked upon, the world will know that indeed Chupukika Biyama is our God as we have maintained in times gone by before we came there was none like us now that we are here they can try to be like us but they can never be and after we are gone they will wish that we live forever the earlier should i say the sooner our enemies and detractors understand this the better for them Those who, underest, who underestimate our resolve do so at their peril. But having said that, we are not underestimating the enormity of the task before us. And our people must listen to this very gospel very carefully and attentively this evening, morning or night, depending on where you are. Our problem did not start today. Our inability collectively to appreciate the magnitude of the mess we are in 
is responsible for what the Fulani Janjaweed and corrupt politicians are doing in our land today. Those who are understanding or discerning enough, those who are capable of reading between the lines, will understand that as soon as Britain refused to make Dr. Zikiwe the Prime Minister of Nigeria in 1960, that was when all of us, our fathers, should have realized that the game was up. But because we never learn from history, that is why we are in the mess we are in today. That is why governors who are elected by the people will collude with our enemies from the north to transport our people to death camps in the northern part of the damnable zoological republic. That is why governors of the southeast will gang up and organize to invite Fulani killer and military squad to come into our land to kill us at will because we never learned from history. Azikiwe is the only frontline nationalist in the whole of Africa not to be made the prime minister or president of a newly independent, of course, European created enclave. Only Dr. Namdi Azikiwe in the whole of Africa. In fact, in the whole of the world. Anywhere you have a frontline freedom fighter, at the end of that very process, that very nationalist or freedom fighter is made the head of state of that very nation. The only place that that failed to happen was in the Zoological Republic called Nigeria. It happened to a Biafran, it happened to an Igbo man. Our people never learned anything from that. That was when Britain started to tell us that they are going to deal with us. Some of you do not understand nor appreciate history. We are the only people along with the Bini Kingdom to put up a very stiff resistance against British encroachment into our land. We fought them for 40 years. Four zero years. Remember biblically what 40 years is all about. Until Arochiku fell in 1904. These are the things that our people cannot come to terms with. Because if you understand this very basic, or should I say, rudimentary history, you will be forced to acquire some semblance of reasoning capacity because the problem that we suffer from is mostly located in our brain we do not reason properly as a people do not take it as an insult no not at all it is a fact when britain refused to make azikiwe the prime minister of nigeria we should have known that our time was up that they were going to come for us sooner rather than later. What is happening in Nigeria today, a Nigeria created not by an African, a Nigeria created not by your ancestors, a Nigeria created not by gathering all the component ethnic groups together and asking them what they want, but a Nigeria created by a foreigner, a Nigeria created by those that came and took us to the Americas as slaves. A Nigeria created for the exploitative purposes of the British crown. A Nigeria created to serve one sole purpose, to make sure that as a people, we will never ever see economic, political, no social advancement because those that created the place that you call your country nigeria never had your interest at heart sadly i will say very very sadly 
African nationalists failed to understand this. They wanted to be kings and emperors in empires they themselves did not conquer or create, but created by a white man to serve the purpose of draining not just our treasury, but our mental capacity forever and ever. What am I trying to say is that as long as Nigeria continues to exist, we will continue to be the last of the very last in the indices of human development right across this very planet Earth. There will be no freedom. You will not have the right to choose those that will represent you. If you remain in Nigeria, if the army doesn't kill you, the police will kill you. If the police doesn't kill you, Fulani terrorists will kill you. If they all fail to kill you, hunger and deprivation will kill you. There is only one solution to kill Nigeria before Nigeria kills everybody else. What is happening in the zoo today is a very clever ploy by Britain. Not all British people, mind you, because there are wonderful people in Britain. But those that are referred to as neo-colonialists. Nigeria was designed to hold us down, everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. Even the Fulani that you think are having fun, most of their people are suffering and crying as well. Only if they can settle down and listen to this very gospel and the ones we have preached before now, they will begin to appreciate our magnanimity because we want to save everybody even beyond the borders of the zoo we want to save every african man and woman child every black person right across this very planet earth if they are willing and able to learn then we all are going to be free the task is huge it is enormous because our enemies are sophisticated they are embedded they control the media sometimes they even determine the narrative they can say that an innocent man is guilty and you all will swallow it they can say that a guilty man is innocent and all of you will swallow it that is why it is very, very critical that people are educated, that they understand what is confronting them and be able to develop the ability to counter every move of the enemy. As you all know very well, the zoo, the media, not just in the zoo, but all over, all over the world, they have been bought over, as you all know, very, very clearly. If we fail to do something about our situation, we are all going to drown. We would all perish. Unless you are understanding and discerning enough, you will not know that you are in bondage in the zoo. Our approach to these issues, or should I say my prescription, is tough love, not one words that get you nowhere. That is why we do things the way we do them. That is why we give you the truth raw. Some people say we are insulting them. Some say we are rude, we are arrogant. We accept. As long as you understand that the message we are seeking to pass across to humanity is the truth. We are the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, under oath, I should say, to restore Biafra. Some people, when you ask them what is their religion, they may tell you we are Christians, we are uh, Jews, we are all the rest of it, Islam, Buddhism, just name it. But we want the world to understand why we are fanatical about Biafra and willing to do even the undoable to ensure that Biafra is restored. 
Biafra to us is a religion. A religion. It is a way of reasoning and a way of life. We believe that the restoration of Biafra is not in the gift of man to give. No single man can ever give you Biafra. It's impossible. Biafra is the gift of the Most High Elohim to give. How we prepare and position ourselves on this very earth, both physically and spiritually, will determine if God will love us enough to give us this, his kingdom on the face of this very earth. That was why in his infinite mercy, Eastern Security Network was established to secure our land. And anybody foolish enough, anybody stupid enough to seek confrontation with us, as I have said previously, before you come to look for us, before you enter into our forest to perhaps die there, because you will, or you all will perish anyway. Look at Yemen, look at Somalia, and look at Syria. Let them be at the back of your minds. Whoever is charged with making that very decision to launch an armed confrontation against the Eastern Security Network. I'm saying this to the hearing of the whole world. As you all know me, I do not do anything in secret. Everything we do is out in the open. Anybody foolish enough, because I know the ginger with are very foolish. You know the full and they have what I call the mentality or the mindset of Mohammed Siakbale, the erstwhile president of Somalia. They never reason, they never listen. They are not intelligent enough to understand when the end has come. The only people supporting them is Britain. And we're not going to fool ourselves. Britain does wield a very considerable clout. They are taking our oil in our land. Now they have found gold also in the north. So the zoo has never failed, not once in its entire, should I say, 60-year history to serve the interest of our colonial masters, those that created us. People say God created, I said to them, you are very, very foolish. God never created Nigeria. A man and a woman did. They are mortal flesh and they are dead. The same way they died is how the zoo is going to die. Nobody can save Nigeria. Nobody can because it is written. How I want people, those who are averse to history, those who don't understand history very well, even those who claim they are writers, they are novelists, you know the thing about we black people, once you do something and you get accolade or praise from white people or from BBC, you think you've arrived. That's the one thing about our people. You think, once they give you one award or the other, once a white man confers that legitimacy or validity on your work or your talent, you feel you've arrived. One major mistake that black people always make. Efforts to divide the East. How has it been possible to keep Nigeria as one? As a failed state that it is. As a terror ravaged contraption that it is. As an abomination that it is. How have they managed to keep Nigeria together. Look no further than what happened during the end SARS protest. When I preach all the time and I say to black people that your mental weakness, your inability to reason properly is why you are suffering, they say it's an insult. No, it is not. They managed to divide those who are protesting by introducing two key elements they know will appeal to their primordial instincts. What are those? Religion and ethnicity. 
let me tell you something you don't understand. That is the only instrument the Europeans had to divide and conquer Africa. What they did was to pass it on to the Fulani Janjaweed. And with the help of the Fulefus and Pretos in our midst, in the entire south, both for Yoruba and in Biafra, both for Oduduwa and in Biafra, it appears that they have managed to now gain the upper hand in the past decades. These continued efforts to divide the East, I can assure them tonight, has failed and will continue to fail. And I want our people from Igodomigodo to Bakasi, from Idoma land to Opobo to understand this. They come to you, they plead with you to amplify your ethnicity against one another. It's a very clever trick. Whereas over the years, if not since the coming of this Janjaweed Caliphate government of the late dead Buhari, before now, it was IPOB and Radio Biafra that made it possible for people to distinguish between a Fulani and a Hausa person. Before, I'm sure all of you go back to your history. You see, Hausa Fulani, Hausa Fulani. It was on this very platform, painstakingly, we lectured and educated people to understand that Hausa is different from Fulani. The same people who over, you know, they're like parasites. The same people who over the years, we are trying as much as possible to have this cohesion between Fulani and Hausa together as one political bloc. When they come to our land, they tell you you are ethic. You are a bibio. You are a jaw, a zong. You are a shekiri. You are a robo. That you are different. You must understand the reason why they keep harping on, on your differences, which in actual fact doesn't exist because we are all one people, is because it makes it easier for them to conquer you. Common sense. They know that if you go to Nigodo, a do state, of course you do. They know that if they come together with his Shekiri, with his Robo, with his Zong, with his Ibo, with his Doma, with his Gala, with his Banke, everybody, to, when I say Ibo, I mean Banke as well. They know it becomes impossible to penetrate. We become free people. For them to succeed is a very clever ploy, which unfortunately, Yoruba media is in support of. And I have warned them repeatedly. I have warned my Yoruba brethren repeatedly that this double game you are playing will consume you. And today they are in Yoruba land killing and taking over their forests. If not for the bravery of Eastern Security Network, I do not think for once that Amoteku would have had the balls, or should I say the courage, to confront Fulani headsmen in their forests. Understand this very cleverly. What they do is very simple. They come to your land as they have done with um, Hopus or the Mainima State. As, as we understand, they have done with George Obiozo this evening. They plant your leaders for you. Your leaders who cannot rise up to challenge their hegemony. That is where I give Yoruba land some credence, or should I say some credit. Because they have not allowed themselves to become as divided and damaged as the East is. Can you imagine for one second? I ask you to ponder this for a second. A Fulani governor is interested in relocating all Fulanis across the Sahel into Nigeria. So that the Fulanis can have a country they can call their own home. In the East, there is a governor... Despite being an Igbo man speaking Igbo, raised as an Igbo setting, he's saying he's not Igbo. I just want, for one, I don't know how to explain this so that people can understand it. I just want for one second for people to sit down and ponder this. It's a very simple, uh, it's not a conundrum, it's very easy to, to, to untangle. The person telling you that you are from Niger Delta, 
the person telling you to accentuate your your ethnicity or your tribe as the case may be the person telling you that you are not related to an evil man the person telling you that you are not biafra the person telling you that everything is different from even a bibio you is different from anna the same man telling you this is bringing his brothers and sisters from senegambia from mali from niger as full any headsmen as bandits as terrorists to come into our country into our space to take it over you his counterpart in the east you are doing your level best to make sure you divide your own people and when you go to some of these people they will tell you that um, um divided we fall united we stand and that was a very clever thing they did and that was how they managed to divide us making it weakening us and making it easier for them to plant hope or them without election as in the state governor and now to plant george rubioza as a president i'll get to that later on britain knew that the light of africa will come from the land of biafra they all know it all over the world as i told you earlier two years ago i told you that i was i was at a meeting with the u.n officials in geneva and one of them said to me it is not that we don't talk about biafra or want the our, our member states or nations to understand what is going on in the land of biafra but as soon as we mentioned the word biafra they all get up and walk away from the room I announced it here live on this very platform, Radio Biafra. Some of you didn't actually absorb it. Some of you don't know the obstacle that Biafra is facing. You think Biafra is easy to get. No, it is not. No, no, not at all. The enemies we have outside is uncountable. Not because we have done anything wrong, but because Britain realized that with Biafra existing as a free nation, that every black person around the world will become free they understand that it's just like when you go to a stream and you don't want people to drink the water coming from that very stream again it's in where you go to the source of the water and you pollute it because if you come downstream and you pollute it people can still go to the middle or even to the front to go and fetch clean water so if you, if you don't want people to drink from a particular stream you pollute it from the source they know that the source of freedom for black people both those in, um, in north america those in south america those even in papua new guinea those everywhere around the world they know that biafra is the key a free biafra means that black people all over the world will become free that was why i said that biafra is the last miracle i want you to understand this all of these obstacles cannot stop us from getting Biafra. It cannot. Instead, it emboldens us. Because the more difficult the process of emancipation, the more enjoyable the outcome when finally freedom comes. If we don't do something, I'm telling everybody, both those in the Middle Belt, those in Yoruba land, go and write down everything I have said in the past try and you know um, 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 compare it to what is happening now you see that we have always been right if we do not act now we will become more fragmented they will conquer us and extinguish us from the face of the earth as i told you the hausa race no longer exists only by language hausa people have nothing now as we speak they have nothing only their language how's that people no longer have any discernible political system they have no hold over their future or their lives they can answer malam all they like but their traditional rulers forever and ever will remain an emir and an emir is a fulani in other words apart from the language it has now dawned on them that is why Fulani have now taken to the front seat and you cannot hear how people even complaining they know they are finished they know they are gone 
How did they succeed in doing this? Even before the white man came, they fully succeeded in dividing the Hausa peasants from their kings, deceived them, took Sokoto from them, and the rest of Hausa land. The only place they couldn't take is present day Bron, and you can see how they're fighting to Tanil to take it. Canon Bron said no. And they are fighting, and they are free, of course, to a limited extent. That is what we all need to do. Therefore, anybody who comes to you to preach one Nigeria, you must go back to educate that very fool. I keep saying it. Anybody who believes in one Nigeria cannot be regarded as an educated person. For the very simple reason, I wrote this a few days ago. You cannot claim to be equal to a white man. A white man can come to Africa to create a country for you, black people in Africa, which means that all of you are incapable of creating a country for yourselves. That is what it means. You have surrendered your future to them. That's number one. For those who believe in one Nigeria. Number two, if you have any self-worth, any self-respect, any regard for human dignity. There is no way you will allow somebody to come all the way from Europe to build a country for you in Africa. I'll give you a very simple example. There is a, there, uh, there, there, uh, should I say, there is a place called India. I'm sure that some of you know that India used to be comprised of, um, I think it's um, Bangladesh. India itself, Pakistan, Kashmir, and is it Bengal? But upon in the, this is how human beings reason. And the selfishness you have in the Nigerian political system today did not start today. It started from Azikiwe, uh, Awolowo, and um, Kafawa Balewa, or should I say Amadubelo? It didn't start today, selfishness. Why do I say selfishness? Because in India, where you have people, or should I say leaders that loved their people, what did they do? What did they do, I ask you? Upon Britain leaving India, they came together and said, we are not compatible. India, you are predominantly Hindu people. We in Pakistan, we are predominantly Muslims. There is no way we can coexist in the same country. So they sat down and decided to partition upon independence. Any sensible being, which we thought that Dr. Zikiwe was, should have realized because the Sadwana of Sokoto told him, Ahmad Bello told him that we are incompatible. I want to say the same thing that Nigeria is a contraption. You, you cannot possibly to be together. They all knew that Nigeria was unworkable in 1957, 58, 59. 19, they all knew exactly with what is happening today, despite knowing that Nigeria was unworkable because they are going to answer President, the Prime Minister. They will have beautiful houses in Ikoi, in VI. They will be loading it over other people. They decided out of expediency to go for the rubbish that Britain created for them. And today, is India doing well? Pakistan that is now offering to come and help the zoo to fight insurgency. I hope all of you can understand all of this. I hope you're following what I'm saying. Because in Africa, you people are not human beings. The white people, they see you, or should I say you, they see you as animals. Forget all the pretense. Africa, you're, in the, you're part of Commonwealth. You are not, they don't have any regard for you. Do you know why? Because they created you. They made you who you are. If as a man or a woman, you are grown up, you are intelligent enough, you cannot build a country for yourself, you have to wait for a European to come all the way from Europe to build countries for you in Africa. That means you're an idiot. There is no difference between you and an animal. Absolutely no difference. It's not an insult. I'm just trying to make you... Now, put yourself in, should I say, in the position of those who are reasonable or sensible enough. Do you think that as a black man from Africa, you can go to Europe, you can go to Germany and create a country for them? 
Can you do it? Of course, the answer is no. If you cannot do it, then why did you allow them to come to Africa to create a country for you? After creating this country for you, half of Yoruba land is in um, Benin Republic. The other half is in Nigeria. One is French, one is English. And people don't feel ashamed of themselves. There is no pride. No, there is no shame. In here. People are not ashamed of themselves. We are Africans and we are black people for that matter. So by nature, we are ethnocentric. We are very tribal by nature. We are not Europeans. And people may wonder why am I saying this? Because in Europe, they don't have a village in Europe. Somebody can be born around Trafalgar Square. If you ask him, so I'm from London. And after a while, they may migrate to New Zealand or to Australia. And they start living there. They have no roots. This is something that Britain has been trying to destroy in Africa for very many centuries. You people don't understand this. The fact that we have a village we go back to, we say, if you ask us where we are from, even if we are born in New York, we say, oh, we are from Umuned. Oh, we are from Abo. No matter where you are born, that is why we migrate like wild beasts every Christmas to go back home. Because a basic African man or woman is ethnocentric. You must go back to the tribe you come from. That's who we are. Nobody can change that. It's in our genes, in our bones. Why am I saying all of this? To let you understand that the reason why not just Nigeria, the whole of Africa is poor is because we did not determine our future. The people that they put down during independence, you know, flag independence, so it is because no state in Africa is independent, including South Africa. The people that they put in power are behaving just like Dave Omahi, Wike, and um, uh, uh, Obiana, and, and Hibas. Exactly the same. There's no difference. Because of what you can gain. And Ibazo must know that we have his contacts in Australia. Ibazo wants to go to Australia to go and buy houses and relocate his family. We are waiting for him. We are waiting for him. We know all the... Uh, 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 we will get to that later on. What am I trying to point out to you is that once you allow your future to be determined by those who don't understand who you are and how you reason you are finished, that is why Africa can never ever be developed. Never. N it's not the fact that they are coming and taking away our resources. That is by the way. The key thing is the way we reason. Our brain is the problem. The way, can you tell me that somebody went to a university, well-read, well-versed, eloquent, very erudite, and that person will come out to offer what they may seem as a credible defense of one Nigeria. And I keep asking them, on what basis are you defending Nigeria? Did your ancestors create Nigeria? Is Nigeria homogeneous in terms of value system, in terms of even education, in terms of religion, in terms of culture, in terms of what? Tell me. Tell me what should make Nigeria great one day. What is it? Oh, perhaps terrorism. I forgot. In order to ensure. Please, I'm, I'm, I, I hope that people are not... I'm lecturing this evening. I hope people are not um, going to get tired because I want to teach this. is very, very important. Britain crafted, or should I say set up what they call the Willing Commission to discuss or look at the plight of the minorities in the East, not in the West, not in the North, because they understand... I'm just trying to let you understand how far they went in order to destroy us. It was cleverly planned. Britain understood that divided the fall. Britain came and said, we are setting up the Willing Commission. Uh, the remit of the Willing Commission is to look at how Igbo people are treating Ibibio people, Afik people, Ijo people in the East. That was why they set it up. Nothing in the West, nothing in the North, nothing. But in the North, of Nigeria, where the Fulanese are a minority. In the north, you have over 200 tribes and ethnic groups in the north. I said 200, over 200. Even in Sokoto State, it's not just Fulani and Hausa that are in Sokoto. There are other ethnic groups in Sokoto. 
Britain did not set up any commission to look at the plight of the Bachama people, the Giras, and all the rest of them. No, 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 no. Despite the fact that they had Fulani MS imposed on them, no, 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 Britain did not see that. No, 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 of course not. There was no minority commission in the north. Britain came to the south to set up a minority commission, tried to remind us, oh, you are from Ibibio, you are from Anang, you are from Efik, you are from Ejo, you are different from Igbo. That's all, that was what they, because they realized that if these people can forget their differences, of course, that is not because we are all Igbo people, I keep saying it. That is why you know that God is miraculous. Shukukikabi, I'm a wonderful God. You know, I don't know. It's like a code. This Biafra we are pursuing is like a code. One day you discover one thing, the next day you discover another, until we discover all the codes. We cannot be free. What am I talking about? Do you know that funny enough? All the states that they created and they called it South South. In all of them, there are indigenous Igbo people in all of them, including Bayelsa. There are Igbo people everywhere. There are Igbo people, as, I don't say, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean those trading in Calabar, or in Oron, or in Eket, or in Ekotek, you know, you know. I said indigenous. They are part and parcel of Benue State, part and parcel of Kogi State, part and parcel of Edo State, part and parcel of every state, the, the so-called South South, oh, there are Igbo people everywhere. If you look at the map that they claim today are Igbo people of the five states, you see it's very, very tiny and very small. That is to intimidate you into submission. Any day you rise up to ask for Igbo people in Benue State, they complain. Igbo people in Kogi, they complain. Today they held a Hanes and Igbo meeting. Should I say election to elect a new Hanese president, which is why the election is illegal. It is illegal, and I'll tell you why it's illegal. Igbo people in Benue did not vote. Igbo people in Kogi did not vote. Igbo people in Cross River did not vote. Igbo people in Akwa Ibom did not vote. Igbo people in Bayelsa did not vote. Are you listening to me? Igbo people in Edo. He wanted did not vote in you know, Ohaneze, but they're all Igbo people. Now tell me where Obiozo will derive his legitimacy from. I am touching upon all these things so that you can understand that the, the way you reason, your process, your thought process, and the way you reason is what makes you a human being. How can you have a Hanes and Dibu holding elections, you know, whereas Igbo people in Benue are not there? So what you're saying, those of you gathered in the world, is that those in Benue are not Igbo. We can, we can dash them to Fulani Janjaweed. And do you know that those in Benue, they are called Northern Nigerians? Igbo people in Benue are Northerners. Are you aware of that? Igbo people in Kogi are called Northerners. Are you aware of that? I want you to reason, please. Reason only can get us out of this mess that we are in. Britain set up the willing commission to divide us in the East, and they did. Our failure to realize that we are one people is why we are suffering today. Of course, I admit, and let me also apologize tonight live on air to people of um, EFIC. Nam the Aziki were removed Dr. Eyoeta as the head of government business in Enugu when they kicked him out of Ibadan, Yoruba land. Dr. Nam Zaziki was single-handedly sowed the seeds for division in the East by removing El Yoyita. And this evening, I apologize on behalf of IPOB, on behalf of every, you know, conscionable Easterner that what Zeke did was absolutely horrendous. It is awful, it is bad. El Yoyita was doing very, very well. Dr. Epo married Margaret Epo from Anambra State. Some of you don't know that. Margaret Epo International Airport in Calabar is actually an Anambra woman. Some of you don't know that. She's an Igbo, Igbo woman, of course. Some of you don't know, but we're letting you know tonight that we are one people. We intermarried. In CBD came from that axis, Sarochuku, Abreba, Ejagam. We are one people. But Britain came and said that we are not the same people. And you see where we are. Oh, I'm from Cross River. Oh, I'm from Akwaibo. But in the north, they say they are from the north. That's what they tell you. We are from the north. They even usurped Middle Belt. That has nothing to do with Fulani heritage. They took everything over. Say we are north. 
when they try to form a group to represent the interest of the middle belt they started complaining no 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 we are one north but in your own village they're dividing you oh, i'm from anambra i'm from imo i'm from enugu the more you play this very ridiculous game the more they advance their cause very very important none of those at enugu then realized the damage ayota's removal by dr zikiwe would have caused in furtherance of the british agenda to divide and destroy us from within i have apologized to the afic nation and i shall do so again we are sorry for the mistakes and division caused by the politics of dr zikiwe the division that they brought to our land we apologize we are one people and for i have treated this very topic before but it's very simple if you say that we are not all one people go and google efik now go to your google and search for efik they will tell you their relatives ibibio and ibo they are all related you search for ibibio they will tell you ibibio is ibo you search for anang they will tell you that anang is related to ibibio and ibibio is related to ibo you go to ajo you do the same thing in ajo they will tell you that ajo is related to ibo you go to to um to 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 lower benue Idomaland, but you ask them, they will tell you they are related to you. They have four market days. You go to, to Ubiaja, which is the Asian, it is the same thing. Four market days. We are all one people. But because they planted people to divide us, agents of destruction, you call them governors, you call them House of Reps members, you call them senators, because they planted them in our midst, they empower them, they use Yoruba media to show them up. That is why we're in the mess we're in today. In actual fact, we are all one people. I said, don't take my word for it. Simply go to Google and Google a job. You will see their relatives. They will see, we see Igbo there. Who is your relative? Is it not somebody who you're close to by blood? Is it not? We launched ESN. One of our one of the command, one of the strongest sectors we have is Bielsa. The people who those from Bielsa say, Oh, we want our own regional security. But when the West did theirs, there it was only one. When the North did theirs, it's only one. It's only in our land. After launching Eastern Security Network, when we deal from somewhere in Bielsa or from River State, we say, oh, we want our own. For a generation. Is this either inferiority complex? Or these people are acting a script written by their fallen age with masters? I want you to understand this very clearly now there is another thing that these guys have cleverly done which some of you don't understand but i will tell you tonight and i of course we and and i will do the white people we have a very great understanding they know i have a lot of respect for them and regard for their history and what they have managed to accomplish but there is one aspect of uh, of um, Yoruba people that you cannot reform. They are journalists, they are media. They are horrible. You know me, I speak the truth. Ordinary Yoruba person is, is great, is good these days. But they are media. <laughs> their media is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Horrendous. And it is because they are afraid of Fulani. Yoruba journalists is afraid of Fulani. Or should I say they are trying to protect their interest because they know that um, 2023, in every likelihood, um, they may rig Tinubu into office. But I want to remind them of this, please. Very, very important. Because anytime Yoruba newspaper writes about IPOB or Mazen Nam Kano, my humble self, they will say proscribed. Proscribed proscribed in other words some people feel that they have something to gain from nigeria over and above their well-being their safety their honor and their dignity i have never seen any yoruba newspaper campaign for the designation of me as a terrorist group none whatsoever because if we, if we are still talking about uh, one nigeria maybe one day it will be our turn 
to go back to Asarok again. One of the hottest regions that experienced the end SARS protest is Yoruba land. And for very good reason, for that matter. But Obasanjo was in Asarok for eight years. Did your lives improve? Jonathan was in office for six years. Go to Bayos and see how horrible life is there. Um, Yeradua was in office. Today, go to Katsina. The late Buhari and in whose name this present fraud is in uh, Asarok now. Go to Katsina. I did not kidnapping people. But I keep saying this that people don't understand it. It's very simple logic. People prefer US visa, Canadian visa, New Zealand visa, Australian visa, uh, Schengen visa, British visa to living in the zoo. And I asked them, the president of America, is he from your village? I mean, not all of you campaigning for tribal uh, um, presidency. He's a, he's a ton of an Igbo man. He's a ton of, um, of a Yoruba man. He must come to the south. Let me ask you, all of you have houses in Dubai. You have, you travel to America, or some of you have houses in London. In England, is the Queen of England from your village? So what it means in actual fact is that it doesn't matter where somebody comes from. It doesn't matter where a president comes from. What matters is the policies that individual is pursuing. Do you think we are that primitive and that crude enough to support any venture as daft as Igbo presidency? Look at Jonathan. I'm asking you a simple question. Look at Jonathan. Is Bayasa any better? The so-called South-South? Look at Yoruba land. My very good father, Paya the Banjo, those who are campaigning, these are serious learned men, campaigning for Nigeria to change. But they had their own son, Obasanjo was there for eight years. They created billionaires like Otedola and Adenuga had their own glow. Obasanjo empowered a few people to become billionaires, that's all. An ordinary Yoruba man or woman is suffering the same way an ordinary Biafran man and woman is suffering, the same way an ordinary middle belt man and woman is suffering, the same way even Hausa man is suffering and woman, even Fulani is suffering. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? You allow them to divide you. I remember answers very well. Shoinka was talking about it a few days ago. You know, when you when you come out for a revolution, you must go to the end. No revolution is pretty. Before next time, of course, there's going to be um, protests next, and uh, we are going to lead it. When next you you are planning to come out to protest, before you do so, go and study the history of revolution, Russian revolution. French Revolution, the Commonwealth, which is Cromwell's Revolution in England, and George Washington's Revolution in America. You can even read Chairman Mao's Revolution. They are not pretty. They are not uh, pleasant, I'm telling you. If you think that revolution is that you come out on the street, you, 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 you dance to, 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 to musicians, because you have seen flavor, you have seen other musicians, you think that it's going to be a carnival jamboree. No, it is not. They are only starting it. When the revolution failed was when Yoruba media allowed themselves to be used because they, they thought that should Nigeria collapse, Tinubu will not be president in 2023. That's all. So they kept writing. They kept writing. They introduced ethnicity. They brought in tribe. They brought in religion. They kept pumping your brain with rubbish, with nonsense. Blessed day, because you were not mentally tuned or tough enough to realize that in every revolution things are very, very difficult. Because you fail to understand this, that was why you messed up. Everybody went home. You started looking for bags of rice, bags of beans. I'm sure that some of you have finished those palliative drills that got one carton of indomie. The palliative is gone. And you're still in pain and in suffering. Had we remained on the streets, forgotten about palliatives, remained on the streets, by now the zoo would have collapsed. 
but you know Yoruba media, they would like you to blame somebody. You want to blame? There has to be somebody to blame. Oh, he said now the can. Oh, he made a broadcast. Stupid idiots! As if during the revolution there's no broadcast. Go and read Chairman Mao. In China, the Cultural Revolution. Go and read about the Bolsheviks in Russia. Go and read about Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell caught the King of England, King Charles the First, and cut off his head. You know what he said to you, Charles before he killed him? I want to prove to you that your blood is not blue but red like ours. I want to prove to you that you're a human being like all of us here. Oliver Cromwell cut off the head of a crowned king of Europe, King Charles I of England. Can you imagine people going to, uh, to um, what's it called, to uh, Asorok to cut off the head of um, this little boy from Yusuf Mohammed from, from Niger Republic? Media will have a day, what they write, oh my God. So a revolution is not pretty. If you're not prepared mentally for a revolution, then don't come out. People were saying that we are breaking into prisons and releasing people during the NSAS revolution. I said, why not? In France today, they celebrate the Bastille Day. Bastille was a prison. When the revolution started, the people went to the prison and they let every inmate out. That is called a revolution. You don't know. Oh, they went to a prison. They were releasing prisoners, uh, hoodlums and uh, hoodlums. Idiots. They, they, they failed to realize that it was a revolution. A revolution. You have finished your five car, your two, two packets of Indomie from warehouse. Typical black people chasing food, 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 food. Today, where is that food? You have eaten it, you have been to the toilet, it's over. And you're still suffering, you're in pain. And I reminded that was exactly what Shea Gavara said. When he came to Congo to fight, Shea Gavara said, I cannot. When he went back to Latin America, they asked him, Why did you come? He said, I cannot stay in Africa. An African man he does not know how to put the need of his freedom before his stomach. He always wants to eat food, 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 always. That was why he came back and went back to, to Latin America. The reason why I said this was because the Yoruba media is a problem in Nigeria. I'm telling you the truth. They have messed everything up. IPOB is proscribed, and I'm the kind who proscribed. They keep writing junk every day for me, idiots who don't exist. But I want to tell them something. The same Yoruba paper carried the headline Punch. Our abductors spoke for Fude, collected 4.5 million ransom, kidnapped Kaduna, PFN chairman. PFN is Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. This man, his name is Apostle Emmanuel Bago. He is telling you that those that kidnapped him, they spoke Fufude, which means they are Fulani people. Only Fulani. They, that was the language I said to Yusuf Muhammad now, now that, um, that um, uh, Jubril has run away. I asked Yusuf, come out and speak Fufude. If you claim your, your Buhari, because Buhari spoke fluent Fufude. But, uh, you know, of course, we are dealing with zoo animals. This man said it was Fulanese that kidnapped us. But the same newspaper will never recommend that all these Fulani bandits groups be proscribed. No, not at all. Do you know why? Because they don't threaten their interest of a Bola made the Tinubu presidency in 2023. Now you understand. These are the type of newspapers and media houses you have in the zoo. They were the ones that came out at the height of the revolution and started writing rubbish. A very famous person talked about, I just want to talk about this end SARS protest for a minute because I've not spoken about it before or before now. Somebody said, oh, they, they were destroying properties, burning uh, 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 infrastructure, uh, burning, uh, is it BLT or BRT bus, you know the Lagos bus? That was burnt down. <laughs> I, black people without conscience. My response to those individuals is this. They use those buses to transport thugs from Mushi to protest sites to, to Lake Itogate to go and kill and attack peaceful protesters. That was why 
that very devil was punched down. But when they write this, they are drunk. They never go to the beginning. It's just like the, like DSS who are every day they keep writing rubbish. Of course, a bunch and all these other stupid newspapers. They keep helping them writing rubbish every blessed day about how I jumped bail, how Namde Kanu is a fugitive. They think if they keep writing it and Google keeps prioritizing it, or somehow when I travel to America to speak to lawmakers, somehow they say, "Oh, you're a fugitive. I won't talk to you." See, they think that white people are stupid as as stupid as they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? They think that white people are as stupid as they are. The same newspapers, they have the video of the raid of my house when the army came to kill me, as a result of which 28 of my men died. They are aware of it. My cousin died. As a result of it, my father and my mother died of the trauma from it. They know, they have the video. And they go to church, some of them. They go to the mosque, some of them, and they read and they study. They don't know who we are. They don't know that the anointing of the Almighty Elohim is upon us. They have no idea. And when they also I say to them, we are in a very wonderful, I am in a very wonderful company. Pharaoh went after Moses. Is that true or false? Herod went after baby Jesus. Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Egypt. They fled to Egypt. Pharaoh went after Moses. Is that true or false? Herod went after baby Jesus. Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Egypt. They fled to Egypt. I traveled to America to speak to the Pharaoh went after Moses. Propaganda organization. Is that true? Best. But I want to let them understand the newspapers in the zoo, Vanguard, Punch, and all these idiots writing junk all the time. That I am in a very good company. When you talk about those who escaped or who survived the state-sponsored assassination. When you mention Moses, you mention Jesus, you mention Prophet Muhammad, then you mention Anamdekan. Now you understand it, don't you? Those who are killing and abducting you in Kaduna are Fulani people. According to Apostle Emmanuel Bako. But out of fear and timidity, Yoruba newspapers will not write about or write against Fulani Janja Buddhism. Because they want a pot of porridge in 2023 with Tinubu presidency. Typical black people. When their wives are pregnant, the editor of Punch newspaper, when the wife is pregnant, she will go to America to give birth. And I ask them, in that America you're going to, is Biden that is now coming in a Yoruba man? But in, in the zoo, Nigeria, you're writing about a Yoruba presidency. It must come to the south. Those morons, those morons in the east are writing about Igbo presidency. But your families are in America and all over Europe. Is Boris Johnson from your village? People want a country that is run properly based on policies, not the ethnicity of the idiot in Asrock. Same, very simple. Shagari was a good man. Shagu Shagari was a wonderful man. He's a full amir, but he was a good man. Oh. I'm saying my own, how I see it. Do you know that the best development that ever happened in the East happened when, or should I say, after the miracle of Dr. Michael Obara, there was a period of um, decay and disaster until Shagari went in and Mbako went in. Mbako will go to Lagos to go and play with Shagari. Do you know there was no time that Mbako actually went to Lagos and came back empty handed? They called him the weeping governor. But anytime he meets Shagari and asks for something, Shagari will always give it to him. Do you see that? that some of you are very small. Igwacha Enugu Expressway was very, very beautiful, I assure you. Shagari built it. Full any man. Because he had good policies. 
It didn't matter who was in Asarok or in Dodam, you see, Dodam Barracks or whatever, the state house or whatever. Rubbish, they called it then. The policies were good. Even when Mbakwe asked us to pay survival levy to build him a city port, everybody did. You can see that Mbakwe was working. It was actually a Yoruba man, the last military administrator of Imo State before Mbakwe took over. It was him that started his Inachi clay factory. A Yoruba man, a, a military administrator of Imo State. You know what this man did? This man, they have the same ceramic factory in his village in, in Yoruba land. I've forgotten his village. But go and Google it. The last, the last military administrator I handed over to Mbakwe. The man said, oh, I have this factory in my village. It's very good. Oh, they use clay. They make bricks. They make roof tiles. They make everything. It's wonderful. But, oh, I, now I am the military governor of Imo State. I want to do something here. The man actually started the project in Ezimnachi. A Yoruba man. Yoruba military governor of Imo State. Uh, what am I trying to prove? That it doesn't matter where you come from. The policies you pursue is what matters. A Yoruba man started the very beautiful Ezinachi factory. Mbappe completed it. And some idiots ruined it. Turned everything upside down. Look at it today. It's moribund. What am I saying? That people must stand up to say the truth. When you see the truth, you must speak it. You know, we are black people. Some of us are very demonic. We are possessed by a demon of greed, envy, hatred, and jealousy. It's in us. It's, we are black people. Nobody can take it away from us. Some people must be envious. They must be jealous. They must have hatred in them. They must be horrible. That is who they are. You can't change them. But what we are preaching this very evening is that no Fulani group has been proscribed. The wretched chattering classes in the zoo. Uh, 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 if I talk, and I asked them which building is good in the zoo in Lagos that was destroyed. They said, oh, Samuel went to show uh, Yusuf Muhammad in Asorok uh, the progress they're making. What buildings do you have? When you go to Dubai, you will bow in shame. What things do you have? I ask you. You have nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the revolution must come back. It will come back, of course. But not revolution to save. If, I have said it before, if people gather, if by the time Shoinka and even Tinubu was campaigning for sovereign national conference in uh, pre-1999, the Third Republic, that they actually sat down and people voted for a new constitution. Who am I? I'm a Democrat. Who am I to say no to Nigeria? I can't say no to Nigeria because even our own people voted for it. But nobody voted for Nigeria. Lugard came with Flora Shaw after drinking, drinking uh, uh, champagne in the evening. Uh, she was drunk. And uh, she said, oh, uh, darling, why don't we call people nigger? niggers? They are niggers. It's Nigeria. And they said, oh, Nigeria, Nigeria. And that's your name. And you're not ashamed of yourselves. Very sad indeed. Blind is your G. Black. When it comes to IPOB, even Igbo Biafran journalists will be at the forefront of condemnation. But when Fulani attack you, kill you, molest you, rape you, cut off your heads, nothing you can hear from them. All in an effort to tarnish the very beautiful, how should I say, impeccable image of the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth. IPOB, the largest in the whole world, but no. You saw men when they came out. Camp one, camp two, camp three, men. And as I wrote yesterday, and I will remind them today, if you're looking for us, please, if you're looking for Eastern Security Network, go into your nearest forest and you get that answer that you're looking for. When people want to destroy us, they come into us and to look for traitors. As somebody wrote, some tribes can betray you for the five percent. <laughs> Uh, but uh, an Igbo betrayer is 100% betrayal. That is why you have them in Edo State, in Kogi State, in Benue State. Everywhere, scattered everywhere, they come and they say to you, Oh, you are only five southeastern states. Igbo states, five southeastern states. And the idiots stupidly agreed. They're leaving their bro brothers and sisters and you think that God will be happy with you. And something happened in Israel. You know, when I want to make this... um comparison between Biafra and Israel. Most people don't understand it. The same thing happened in Israel. Do you know why Israel fell? Do you know why the Babylonians and the Romans took over Israel completely and destroyed them? 
because in their stupidity they were divided between the northern kingdom and southern kingdom together as one israel militarily they were very very strong after the death of solomon i think um, somebody said i've forgotten his name to your tent or israel after fighting a war and winning it to your tents o israel israel was divided into two the northern kingdom samaria and the southern kingdom judea and the enemies came and picked them off it took them two thousand years to recover from that stupidity two thousand years to recover from it they come to our land they go to Anioma, they say Anioma is not Hebrew. Even the name Anioma is Hebrew, they say they're not Hebrew. The idiots will agree. Some of them, not all of them. They go to Ikwere land. People who are from Unkwere, very clean and clear, answering Igbo names, we care, Meiji, everything. Hell, oh, we are Niger Delta, we are not Hebrew. Tell us what Niger Delta means, the idiots cannot tell you. Instead, he will hand over his brothers and sisters to Fulani Janjaweed to slaughter. The same thing that happened to Israel. It's all over the place. And the enemies came and took them over. What I'm saying to you is this. If not for IPOB, believe you me by now, some of you will be answering Musa and Amina. I'm telling you, before God and man. We are the ones that stopped them in Ebony. All the years I've been telling you we've been stopping them, you didn't believe me, did you? It's only now that we are now proving to the world what we can do. They cannot take Ebony State. Omar is a madman. They can't take a point state. We will all die there. They can't take a point state. And they know it anyway. They know. If you stand in our way, you will go down. Today they gave you another Janjaweed slave as your Haneze president. He doesn't know where he's coming from. He doesn't know where he's going. His job is to make sure that full and settlements continues in our land. He's a learned man. He claims he's a professor. He was the ambassador to USA, ambassador to Israel. And I asked him in Israel, who are the founding fathers in Israel? Who created Israel? Modern day Israel. Of course, it's God Almighty in heaven. Who created USA? God Almighty in heaven. He served in places where God created all those nations. He's coming back to support a project that was created by a man, a mortal flesh and named by a woman. And he's a professor. And he plans to support his good friend, uh, Ibrahim Gambari. You know, they're very close. I don't know how Fulani Janja would manage to do this to us. They always speak idiots. They get Yoruba papers and some Igbo stupid journalists to write about them glowingly. And that's it. Apex Igbo organization is basically an extension of Fulani Yetiala Janja with organization. They kill your children. You cannot come together to form a security outfit. You want it to be state by state. But everywhere else, people band together as a region to flow security outfit. Now that we have done that thing you weren't able to do, to support this is a problem. Because the masters in the north will be upset. They'll be very, very angry. Now you see how stupid some of them are. But some of you may still go ahead and support them. That is your business. The Ohanese election is illegitimate and cannot be recognized anywhere in the world. Instead, I'm conversing very seriously for World Ebola Congress to take over the affairs of doing what is social, cultural, whatever, of um, Igbo people. That is my preference, and that's what I will push for. That World Ebola Congress should rise to the plate and do the needful. They must do the needful, because Ohanese will kill all of us. I'm telling the truth. These people are evil. They have the money. They give the money. They pay uh, the, Vardia, uh, the Vanguard correspondent in Enugu. They pay guardian correspondent in nobody to write an apex, apex. Meanwhile, we are all dying. The Fulanese have installed Obi Ozo, their stooge. I must make a vanguard correspondent in all and sundry that we do not recognize Ohanese and their throne and Yoshi. World War Congress should replace them immediately. They are nothing. The same way they used Zeke against Ojuku. After composing the Biafra National Anthem, Dr. Zikiwe jumped ship and joined Nigeria. Because they promised him that one day he will be the, he will be the head of state. Some of you don't know that Zikiwe was supporting Biafra until he jumped ship. The same promise they made to Awolowo. They also told uh, Chifawo that, he, no, don't worry, one, one day he'll be president of Nigeria. Did that happen? 
may never happen. The only two Yoruba men that have ever sat at the helm of affairs in the zoo called Nigeria are those picked by Fulani people. Obasanjo was picked by the Fulani. So too was Shonekon after they annulled the, the, the win of um, Abiola, as if we do not know. They didn't stop there. They also used uh, an anti Biafran demon in the person of Obabiasika to try and finish off the job. Obabiasika, like Chimamanda Adichie, was an intellectual. He was a vessel of Ibadan, very, very learned. Obabiasika was very bright, very intelligent. And um, in order to prove to the British that he was detribalized, you know that stupid word, <laughs> black buffoon. They start to talk her nonsense. <laughs> I don't see if you're coming. I, I, they're not together. They're talking rubbish. Before the state of Israel was founded in 1948, the Jews all around the world were not together. They were not together. Go and read the book called Exodus. They were not together. The, the very prominent Jews in New York that had the money said no. In fact, they went to come and fight David Ben-Gurion. And at the port of Haifa, their ship was sunk. They brought arms to come and fight their own brothers, not to fight the Arabs that were attacking Israel from all, all corners and quarters. The same thing with us. Anybody who is a bit learned, if you write one or two things, you think you've arrived. And you can offer an opinion on Biafra, which you don't know. I, very disappointingly, Chimamanda Adichie, that I had regard and respect for, was talking to you. People said you should understand it the other way. That yeah, is pure rubbish. To tell me you believe in Nigeria and you're learned, you believe in Nigeria, you went to school, you went to school and you studied, and you believe in something that was created as a limited liability company, more or less. The zoo, the Royal Niger Company. A white man will decide a name of a nation for you, decide what to. Wasted education. That tells you all you need to know. Now I understand the reason why they never gave the Nobel Prize to Chinua Achebe. Now I know. Before I thought I knew, but I didn't. They did not give the Nobel Prize to Chinua Achebe because he failed to denounce Biafra. Britain knew that Chinua Achebe was a hardcore Biafran. They denied him the Nobel Prize and gave it to Wole Shoinka instead. He wrote more books than Wole Shoinka. He's known all over the world than Wole Shoinka because he's a Biafran. That global conspiracy against us the most his words has been translated to is it 270 i don't know how many languages all over the world things fall apart in fact i recommend i suggest that chimamanda goes back to read go back and read things fall apart achebe was more famous than you are chino achebe was more famous than chimamanda than chimamanda he was a biafran he died a very proud biafran you that came up, maybe because BBC gave you an award, maybe one plastic, one glass um, ornament. You think you've arrived, you are now dining and drinking tea with white people. You now have opinion about Biafra. What do you know about Biafra? How can a people be united when they were defeated in a war? A war of attrition. What I call the Third World War. What do you know about Biafra? The trauma and the psychological damage we suffer during the war because of treachery from those we never expected would betray us. I'm talking about if they cannot unite. That England you go to, that place they call you to read the stories for little children. Is the president of that place from Igbo land? They're talking about Igbo presidents. Is Boris Johnson an Igbo man? But they give you a award and they give you all the limelight you need all over the world. And you're talking rubbish about Biafra. Rubbish that you don't know about. Let me remind you, the Jewish intelligentsia in, in US did not support Zionism. They never supported the methods and tactics of Ergon and Haganah. Go and read their history. They blew Britain out of that very place with dynamite. That was how Britain left Palestine. Britain was in charge of Palestine. It is their job to suppress the light of God. That is their job, doing the job of Lucifer, always. They were given what was called the Palestine Mandate. Britain, very, very sad. Do you know that the brigadier, who was the garrison commander, in, in fact, the overall commander of the British forces in Palestine, was a Jewish man. 
He was a Jew, a British Jew. He was commanding a foreign army in the land of God, in the land of his ancestors. And he was working for Britain, trying to suppress Haganah and Egon. They were bombed out of Palestine. Should I say the land of Israel? That's not called Palestine anyway. Bombed out of the land of Israel. And rightfully so. You see omelette, aqua, egg, you know, fried egg. You know that egg is very precious and very beautiful. Before you can make an omelette, you must break an egg. Do you understand what that means? If you don't know what it means, please go back. Go back, please. And study it very carefully. We are prepared to break as many eggs as possible to fry this very beautiful omelette that is Biafra. We don't listen to what people say. You can talk from now to the kingdom come, write your garbage in punch newspaper, in nation, in vanguard, from now till the kingdom come. <sighs> this means nothing to us. We continue what we are doing. You can buy over one or two saboteurs. That is entirely your business. We, we number in millions all over the world. In millions all over the world. As you know, two on the time, you know, four and a here. The same way they used Okadibo to rubbish Zeke. I remember Okadibo in MPN calling Zeke a, a mosquito or the rant of a mosquito or whatever. The same people killed Chuba Okadibo. A very brilliant mind once again. More recently, they now use the same criminals now clamoring for Igbo presidency. Do you, you see them now? Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency. You think they have something upstairs? They have nothing upstairs. All of them. Omahi wants to go. Omahi, yes, he wants to go presidency. Oh, Ocho Sokalo, you want to go presidency? Oh, maybe even Wobodo, you want to go presidency? Yes. Now let me ask you a question. When the Kweme came out to contest in 1999, Igbo presidency, what did he do in just Ocho Sokalo? You betrayed the Kweme. You voted for Basanja. Just PDP convention in 1999. So that time, Igbo presidency wasn't good. Was not wasn't good enough. It's now that you want it, yes. And now let us go to Dave Umahi. Your own brother, Peter Obi, who contested with um, Atiku under your own political party. You were in PDP, but you delivered the Boeing State to APC against your own brother. Now you want to contest because you felt that should Peter Obi go and succeed and become VP to Atiku after eight years or thereabout, or after four years, Peter Obi will naturally succeed and become the president of the zoo, thereby spoiling your own chances. What did you do? What did you do, I ask? You campaigned against your own brother, against your own fellow Igbo brother. Now you're talking about Igbo presidency. I just want to prove to the world that these people are they're just criminals, a gang of thieves, all of them. Oh, Jesus, Carl, after campaigning against a poem, all of them, do you know that the entire PDP caucus from the East never voted for a poem? So they were asking themselves, how come your own brothers don't want to vote for you? Or oh, Joseph Carlo was there. Some people are championing, yeah, he should be the president. But the Kweme served Shagari very well. Never stole a dime. In fact, bankrolled MPN. He was a multimillionaire and is very successful architect in the USA before he came back. Very wealthy man. The Kweme. Oju Zokalo, did you vote for Ekweme in 1999? Now that you're campaigning for Igbo presidency. Was Ekweme running for, for, for Igbo presidency? <laughs> Dave Umahi, Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency is our turn. When your brother Peter Obi was campaigning, did you campaign for him? Did you vote for him? Despite the fact that he is your brother in the same political party. That is why all this your nonsensical Igbo presidency is dead on arrival. When we were doing Biafra, did you support anybody? Instead, you called the army to come and kill us. And now you want us, you, you want to go to Abuja. <laughs> you send their force now, they'll bring their, uh, they'll bomb everybody to death. They are Igbo presidency, Igbo Kuneba, useless set of idiots, traitors, and betrayers. Jim Wobodo, in 1999, in Joss, you were speaking Hausa against your own brother, Kweme. You were speaking Hausa. In Joss, in 1999, you campaigned against your brother. Now you are talking about Igbo presidency. <laughs> oh, dear me. Igbo presidency will open there, useless people. There is something I want to tell all of you. 
We hope, pray, and know that Biafra will come or the zoo will be destroyed before 2023. Of course, everybody knows that. It's, it's given. COVID-19 saved them last year. We won't save them again. This year, the vaccine is out. Instead of an evil man to be the president, or you're about for that matter, let Fulani continue. It is called Mirina Mohuana Manana Yup. Since you people prefer to be slaves, because if we allow any of you idiots to enter into as a rock, after about four or five years or six, uh, Fulani will take you back for eternity. You would have benefited from your own wickedness and evil. So you know what is going to happen? If Fulani are smart enough, they should continue. They can, uh, everybody saw what happened all over the world. Rigging of election these days is just, uh, is given. It is no longer a big deal. As long as you proclaim the winner, that's it. If Fulani are very smart, they will continue in office. They will continue in the zoo. In their zoo. Of course, we are leaving. We are not going to stay there. That is why you don't want to support Biafra. Because of presidency. So you and your friends can now be eating money. You buy your own houses in Dubai. You want to be like Katiku. You want to be like, um, your wife want to be like, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aisha. Uh, flying private jet to Dubai for shopping. Meanwhile, we are dying. We want people to understand this, DSS especially, no matter how many groups, fake groups you create, because every day you create a fake group. Igbo, Ohaneze, Igbo in the diaspora, uh, including men and women and children, this group now says hey, we don't want to listen to Namdekan. <laughs> As if Writing this junk will make any iota of difference. Do you think it makes us more popular? Of course, yes. Do you think it will make any difference? We will, we will change our mind. <laughs> the zoo, they are not that stupid, though. You know, I told you during NSAR's campaign, some of you never realized this. We outnumbered the Nigerian army by 100,000 people to one. They are nothing. We outnumbered them. We have numbered the Nigerian army. We, you, you, do you see when we came out, when people came out on the streets for NSAS protest? They were nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. We have numbered them. You people must prepare for a revolution. A very bloody one. Very, very bloody, I tell you. As I said, if you don't know what is involved in a revolution, please don't come out. What we are not going to allow uh, foreign terrorists from Mali and Senegambia to take our land over, it cannot happen. Instead of this yam not to cook, let every firewood finish. I'm trying to translate. Kama jigeshe nkugu. And things are going to happen. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm telling you now, people, who told, who did you tell? Did you tell us? I am telling you now that things are going to happen. If you're looking for Eastern Security Network, please go into the nearest forest. And as I pointed out, as you're going, make sure that you have written your will because you will die there. Go and check the history anywhere in the world. Once you raise a gun, you don't bring it down until you're successful. Or until you're dead. One of the two must happen. So anybody thinking that we are going somewhere, you are grossly mistaken. It doesn't matter who you're working for. It doesn't matter the intelligence agency you're working for. It doesn't matter how you try to couch your stupidity, ignorance, and treachery. It doesn't matter the language you're trying to use. We are pursuing freedom. And the zoo doesn't understand peaceful agitation. I'm not asking for trouble, but they don't understand it. Nike took our people, destroyed synagogues. You need water. So you want us to put our arms again, they will come again and they will arrest people and they will kill people again? Of course not. Anybody who does that is a, is a complete idiot. Complete idiot. Those that they appointed in the Uma he is trying to appoint, they want to set up a parallel uh, uh, security outfit. I say, go ahead. Nobody will even turn up. Go ahead now. You can get your political party agents. As you did, get them into upper auditorium or whatever auditorium you have in a back lake and um, give them some money. 
and that's it. We are the largest mass movement in the world. Now that our people in America are waking up, we can sustain the defense of our land for a million years. That's one thing the idiots don't understand. Our people are in the USA. Many of them, very, very many of them, they can sustain this very campaign forever and ever. We're not going back home. <laughs> you don't know that? No, 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 we're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. This is a live presentation. The time now, I believe, is approximately, um, should I say 26 minutes to 9, is that correct? Yes, I believe so, to 9 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. I don't want us to underestimate how difficult this very battle is. We are fighting Britain, we are fighting new colonialists, we are fighting every major interest. Do you know how many oil companies you have? You know, some people say, oh, why don't you go to, what have you done in America? This, this, this. There is ExxonMobil, there is Halliburton, very wealthy companies, very rich. They are campaigning that Biafra should not come in America. They're Americans. I went to Israel. Some Israeli businessmen that have um, dealings with the zoo, making so much money from the zoo. After attending a meeting at the Knesset, they'll go to the Knesset and they'll talk to Israeli lawmakers. There are some lawmakers that I've spoken to. They will go to Israel and be speaking to Israeli lawmakers, asking them not to support IPAB, not to support me. Israeli businessmen, because they're making money from the zoo. Do you know that in Italy, that any, do you know any, Ajib was writing to a judge in, in Italy, telling the judge not to grant IPOB family members asylum in Italy. Ajib, Ajib Petrola, like you have in Biafra land. Because they think that once Biafra comes, that we, at least if we, we'll put meter and ask them to pay for what they're taking from our land. They don't want it. Britain doesn't want it. Do you know how many enemies we are fighting? Do you have an idea? How many enemies we are confronting every blessed day? I want you to go to Google now and type in IPOB. You will see some stupid news. Even go to Biafra now. It's news about Jolo Biafra that is on Biafra page. Do you know that they paid Vanguard, Nation newspaper, Punch, and Sun? Are you, do you know that they gave them very huge amounts of money in December to attack us and to attack um, Eastern Security Network? Go to Google now and type in Nam Dekan on your Google search. All the news about me is about this group you said no to ESN. Repatriate Nam Dekan. All bad news. They give money to, they, they paid Google as well. They give money to, to Vanguard and to Punch and all these idiots. They write their junk. Then they boost it. They go to Google and ask them to boost it. So when it's such a name, they, if I, if I go to your office to speak to you, of course, if I, if you, if you, if your secretary books an appointment to see me, the first thing they will do is to go and Google to say, let's find out who this person is. They will see all that news. You don't know that's what they're doing. You people, I don't, I don't, I don't actually think that our people understand the enormity of this very task. They think it's easy. Mate, that was why, uh, some people gave us started building hotels with the money they gave them to fight for their fire building hotels because they know how difficult it is they know it because how about our own people even those who are working for bbc people don't know the mess we are in but by the special grace of the most high elohim we have defeated all our enemies they know how determined we are they know how resolute we are they know we're not going to back down. They understand that very well. So maybe they're trying to end their pay. These are journalists that went to, to school that read about ethics. They, most of them are their friends. They're evil. But they still write against us. Not that they don't like what we are doing. But because having this UG, black people, demonic, if they see road, they want to take the, the bush. But we are not giving up. A lot of people are banking on us. Not just their friends, but right across the zoo and beyond. People listen to us all over the world. They tell me, they write to me, they tell me, they listen to you. We listen to you all the time. We listen to Radio Biafra. What you people are doing is marvelous. Keep doing it. 
So you think people are not listening? Of course, the whole world, they are listening. Right now, in Abuja, there's no movement. Everybody's listening to this very gospel of redemption. That is to warn them that we're not going back. There are, there are killings everywhere. Insurgency. People don't know of insurgency. It never dies, you know. And I will tell you how we are going to kill of the zoo. I just hope and pray that they come looking for ESN. I'm praying they do. Then they'll open up another front in the east. Then um, I will just be waiting for our the brothers to try and join the fray. And the zoo is gone. We, he, he, to tell you how stretched they are, they only sent 1,000 soldiers to Enugu. Only 1,000. From the north. In every barracks you have in our land, they're not up to 1,000 soldiers in them. They're not up to 1,000. They, you see them on patrol with their hillocks uh, with AK-47 killing civilians. In uh, Even the one at Fege, they are not up to 1,000. No beans, they're the same thing. They are not up to 1,000 men. It's just intimidation and fear. And, and using uh, is the, is the turn of our village to confuse and deceive all of you. But we have run them into the ground. They cannot succeed. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Anybody found in the bush in our land, and you are not ESN, we will treat you as a terrorist, and you will die there. Once we see you inside our forest, you are dead, you are dead meat, you are gone. It doesn't matter if you are vigilante, it doesn't matter if you are forest guard, it doesn't matter if you are zoo police, it doesn't matter if you are zoo army, once you go into the forest and you are armed, you will die. Turns out I didn't warn you. The zoo police can be moving about in their cities, that's their business. We don't have a problem with that. They can do their joint patrol in the city. We are looking for terrorists in the bush. If we find you there, we'll treat you as one. We treat you as one. Simple as that. Their soldiers are being killed all over the place. Who doesn't know that? But they're moving the few they have down to the east. That is, that is how the zoo is going to implode. We stretch the army. They are committed in the north. They will be committed in the east. And then it's over for them. And let me warn every family. If you are from the middle belt, if you are from Odudua, and they send you down to the east to come looking for ESN, you might as well tell your family you will be coming back because you will die. I can assure you, you will die. God is my witness, you will die there. Ask those uh, that came before you. Ask them those they sent before, where are they? Ask them where those people are before you start coming to start patrolling inside the bushes. And if you are a PG, a traditional ruler, aspiring Abuja Sabotua, a police stroke politician, and you think you can act as an informant, you are wasting your time, you too will go down. If you don't know, let me tell you. Ensas must be revived this very year. The sins of the murderers who are politicians must be visited upon them. They are locking up people without trial. Our people are in a hoda prison, locked up by Nguike without trial. He must say something without trial. They kill with impunity. And when we go after these people, they say, oh, the, what you're doing is not good. It's anti-democratic. But to pick up somebody's child or husband and lock them up for two years is not, is not a crime. In a whole prison, people that did nothing, take them to court, they won't take them to court for trial. Judges are more interested in collecting money from us. They are frank judges. They won't take money from us. Do you know how much we spend on legal fees and uh, bail perfection and filing for application every week? You have no idea. You have no idea. But you go to Kabiyama is faithful, always. The inconsistencies of those that call themselves intelligentsia is sickening. You cannot have one foot in the zoo and another foot in freedom. Both are incompatible. Nigeria is the exact opposite of freedom. Anybody who supports Nigeria is a criminal. Is a hardened criminal. They will try to confuse you with their newspapers, with their television stations. If you fall for it, then you are a fool. I have given you reasons as to why Nigeria should not exist. And it will not exist. 
they have nothing. That is why uh, insecurity, Nigeria needs foreign help, says Shoyinka. Even Ekuremato wants in international intervention. Fulani headsmen have taken over on Do State, according to Pastor Giwa. Shoyinka is a learned man. He's asking for the preservation of one Nigeria. And I told you that they have an army that cannot fight. Their army can only kill civilians. I'm telling you the truth. That is why I'm very glad that ESN is armed. Because they are even Shoyinka, Nigeria, the patriotic, patriotic, they are asking for foreign help. But when it comes to, the, uh, to killing civilians, you don't ask for foreign help. I told you before, Nigeria never defeated Biafra. Britain, Russia, Egypt, and OAU did. Nigeria cannot defeat ordinary ragtag band of insurgents in the north who are badly educated. How can you comfort ESN that has a major number of them are graduates? How can you do that? When they, what we use, we produce ourselves. How can you defeat such an army? An army of volunteers. How can you defeat them? I'm asking you. How? Where can you even find them to defeat? I feel sorry for the zoo, honestly. I feel sorry for the zoo. Again, on another note, a lot of people are asking us if they can be part of the Sub Africa app, and I say no to it until we determine who set it up and for what purpose. They can do what is called data harvesting. They can harvest your data and give it and sell it to the zoo. Please be very careful. There are other platforms that our people are developing, and they gave me one to broadcast this very evening. I wasn't able to do that, but as we go forward, maybe during my next broadcast, we're going to use it. During my next broadcast, we are going to use it. It was sent to me. They did very well. They did very, very well by sending it to me. And um, as we move forward, I do hope and pray that we'll be able to use it. Um, what is the name called again? It is called um, matetweet.com. Matetweet.com. I think it is one of us that developed it. People have been asking us to develop something. We have developed something. And matetweet.com. Go and register that. It's called matetweet. It's M A T E T W I T dot com. Matetweet. M A T E T W I T dot com. Go and register there because by the grace of the Most High Elohim, I will be broadcasting there next. My page, my official page, there's Mazen Nam the Kano. Go and try and follow. Chineke Boka Facebook Hawk. Ndara. We have an alternative and we are going to be using it. As I said, please, we are also going to develop an app as we go forward for messaging. This sub Africa, we need to know who owns it. Zoo can pay anything to discredit or to destroy what we are doing. We don't want to join a platform that tomorrow they will sell, harvest information and sell it to the zoo. No. But in the meantime, signal is very strong. And um, I, I'm hoping to leave WhatsApp myself uh, in the next four days. So we are going to go over to Signal. Everybody should go to Signal, please. Go to Signal and leave WhatsApp alone. Go to Signal. Go to Signal for the time being until we develop our own app. As I said, there is a chat forum you can join. It is called Met. Tweet m a t e t w i t dot com. Go there and register. Very very important, please. Very very important. They have been developing this since last year, and it is now here. You know we do everything. We know what Britain did to us with Ireland and sea blockade. So we're not going to be going begging anybody for arms. We will build our own in our land. God gave it to us naturally. Scientists are born in our land. From your mother's womb, you're a scientist. We have them. And we are putting them to very good use. And you must also pray for them. As you pray for ESN, you also pray for our scientists. Very, very important. And coming to IPOB, please. You know this with the thing they're doing us. So Facebook will suppress them, cut them down, do this, do this. You are making us to be creative. It was what they did to us between 67 and 70 that led us to believe or to decide that we can no longer rely on any country to supply us the weapons with which we're going to defend ourselves. We made everything ourselves. 
we build it ours. We get it from you, we replicate it. We build it ourselves. So, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, zoo, I feel sorry for the zoo, honestly. I feel sorry for the zoo. For us to succeed, we must do something within IPOB family worldwide. We must be disciplined and have a sense of discretion. That is the key. Nobody is allowed to form a cabal or group of friends to advance any selfish interest. Everything you do, you must do for Biafra. For Biafra and Biafra alone. And let me also warn every principal officer of state. When you are appointed into any position, that your position is temporary. You may be relieved of your position or assigned to a new post at any given time. Your service is dependent on your performance and you could be removed. You must have that in mind. I have instructed our head of um, DOS, Mazia Dozium, to draft um, an undertaking, a document, which will be signed by every principal officer of state to abide by these new rules because we have gone into a very decisive and dangerous phase of the struggle. And to those of our brothers and sisters that left the zoo, army, and police to join this revolution, you are welcome. But you must understand that what we run is a highly disciplined volunteer army. Volunteers only. Please. And we don't want the very ill discipline and character of a zoo soldier to contaminate what we have in us already. We are highly disciplined. If we eat, you don't know. If we don't eat, you will not know. People running around and sending out voice messages and voice notes. I don't want to hear of such again. Our volunteers don't do that. We are highly disciplined. If you're leaving the zoo army to come and join us, you must also develop the mind of a volunteer. I will also instruct Mazia Dozium. We have appointed our officers to take charge of affairs in the USA. A memo will go out to that effect in the coming days. America and Canada will be divided into provinces. Each of the provinces, or should I say regions, will be independent. There will not be any national coordinator for the US because it's too big. Neither will we have one for Canada because it's too big. But there must be an oversight council as well to bring them together should the need arise for them to undertake any project as one United States of America. But in the next few days, a memo will be issued detailing those we have placed our family in their control in the United States of America. There will be about, I think, about four or five regions in the USA. All of them will be independent of one another. But there will be an oversight committee as well. If you want to support ESN, please don't give us food. We don't want Zoo to poison food and give it to us, please. The only thing that can happen is financial assistance. And an account has been announced in the United States of America for this very purpose. And people should use it. There are no multiple accounts in the USA. USA, they are doing very well in terms of financing this very movement. And uh, for very many years, I used to castigate them and say all manner of horrible things against them. I didn't know that they were waiting for ESN to be launched. And as soon as ESN was launched, most of them came out, I must be honest with you. Most of our people in America, they have woken up. And they are supporting this very movement in a very massive way. And we welcome them. All of them. Um, to this very noble family. You don't have to be in IPOB to support what we are doing. And when we say Eastern Security Network, it starts from Edo all the way to Cross River. There is no need for anybody anywhere to open up any other security network. We are everywhere. After this program, I will also post the video of our people in Akwaibom, of our volunteers in Akwaibom, made up of Ibibio, Anang, or on people who have come out to defend their land under one banner, under this very IPOB by the special grace of the Most High. So I must warn everybody, please, do not, and I repeat, do not give us any food, ESN, 
we know how to supply the food to avoid contamination. Very, very critical, please. And everybody must keep their lips tight. If you don't know what we are doing, go back and study the history of Ekumeku. And Britain will tell you more. Go and study the history. If you are part of what we are doing, go and get a fresh palm from Omo. Put it in your mouth so you will not speak. Because careless talk costs lives. Do not speak to anybody about ESN or what they are doing or what they, uh, what they intend to do. If you do so, if you open your mouth and speak, you will lose your tongue. As simple as that. We are not joking. We are no longer joking and cannot joke. We have lost too many people. Too many people. To contemplate messing about with ESN. They are our first and last line of defense between darkness and we the children of light. We must guard what we speak very or what we say very, very jealously. Nobody should say anything about ESN. But as I said, there are no more terrorists in our forest. That I can assure you. They had the best Christmas ever. They can some of them, even the actors and the actresses, they all came back home. Because they knew that ESN is there. Forget all their stupid propaganda. There was one stupid police, is it the age of police that said that ESN, see how foolish they are. ESN is propaganda. Oh dear me, propaganda of 10,000 men. And counting. I say to them, if you say we don't exist, go into the forest. On that note, we have come to the end of our broadcast this very evening. And um, I continue to pray for this very noble family. Ceaselessly, seven times a day, I do not fail. The devil will come in every guise to discourage you. That's what they want to do. But if you ask Satan, what is the alternative to Biafra? Even Satan cannot answer because zoo is a failed state. They will recruit all the Asabo from everywhere and fund them. Ojuku faced worse than what we are facing today. Yet he held out for three years. Talk less of when we are able to match them. Toe to toe. We can fight for a thousand years, I can assure you. I thank you all for listening, wherever you are. I pray for the blessing and mercy of the Most High Chukukika Biyama upon each and every one of you. We are not just fighting for Biafra. We are fighting for everybody who is oppressed in Nigeria. Everybody, if you feel that you're oppressed, we are fighting for you. And eventually, we all are going to be set free, not through any might of ours, but by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim. And on that note, we'll come to the end of our program today. Do not forget what Biafra means to us. Biafra is our religion. And here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim Chukokabiam is our God. From me, from here, with all the love in my heart, good evening. All over the world.